Hello friends, welcome back once again. So last episode was all about the UFF binding basic fundamentals. And in this episode, we'll talk about binding constraints and custom data type, which is very important, of course. And uh, definitely, I assume like you already gone through the last episode. In case you have missed, missed out by any reason, I have also given the link in the description box. You can take a look. So this is a very short video, but we'll get a good concept on certain binding constraints. So start with an example. So this is certain input fields you can see. And I have put certain constraints and validations on each field. And we'll learn about how differently this validation works. So the first one is an water quantity. And if I just, you know, I put it a value, let's say zero and click enter, it gives me a message that number must be greater than or equal to one. So if I put one or two, whatever, it's okay. At the same time, if I put a value, let's say 12 and it offers a, it complains and it says like it should be less than or equal to 10. So you can understand very well. There is a range of one to 10. That number is uh, this particular field accepts. So if I give value 10, it's okay. If I put 10.0, it complains again saying like it is, I mean, decimals is not allowed. So that way the certain validations, this input field offers. Let's check the second one. This is also water quantity. And uh, if I put 10.0, it doesn't complain. But if I put, let's say 0, 10.1, it complains. And in this case, it's a message which is different than earlier. So last time it was all about a generic message. It's showing into a number less than equal to uh, 10. But in this case, some sort of a custom message that I'm displaying. So we'll see how these two works differently. But yeah, as I said, it accepts decimals, as you can see, or you can put 9.2345, doesn't matter. It still accepts which is not the case in the first input field. Let's move ahead with the third one. It's basically entering weight. If I put zero, it complains. It says it should be starting value should be two dot three decimals. So that means if I put two automatically three decimals set to zeros. If I put one, it's all, all good. If I put 12, it again complains. It says the number will be I mean, maximum number value should be 10 dot triple zero. So if we just put it 10 dot triple zero, I mean, even if I put 10, it's all set. If I put 10 triple zero, but one, then it's again complaints and saying that maximum three decimal it accepts or it allows. So certainly different for the fractions or, you know, uh, decimals that this particular weight field is uh, working with. The travel date or whatever the date uh, picker that the Elementor have used, and you can see this is kind of an, a formatting that it uh, it shows or it accepts. Any date I just you know select, it always take a fashion of you know year then uh, current month and the and the date, right? I'll show in the coding uh, that how this pattern can be changed easily. Last one is called the zip code, and it says the value should be. I mean, it says enter zip code. If I put some value, it complains. It's saying that the zip code, this must be of five digits. So if I put five, it says, okay. But if I put six, it again complains. But if I put even A, it's again still complains, right? As you can see, decimals, it doesn't accept. This kind of a basic uh, need or requirement, uh, we definitely need to address in our application. So this video will talk about how to achieve it uh, in a programmatically or rather using a binding constraints. So let's head over to the uh, VS code. So to start with, this is the index.js which loads my view, XML view and the different input fields that you can see under the panel. So let's expand the first input field and I have done the binding under this value property. You can see this is my model property order quantity one, which I bound uh, to this input field. The type I have taken is a CPY model type integer. And I have added a constraint of object minimum and maximum as one and 10 respectively. So 
where did I find these constraints and this, those two kind of values? If you want to know, you can just go to this particular thing, SAPY uh, type integer, just copy it and just paste it somewhere. And this is the API you will find from SAP SDK, UI5 SDK. And you'll see the constraints contains this property minimum and maximum. There are many other types also available that we can find it over here quickly go to inspect element go to console we can put the same thing but instead of integer if i just remove and keep it till type and expand those are the different types that you can see which is standard like boolean currency date float integer etc that is the kind of values that you can see okay so from here i have just taken these constraints you have to just register this particular input field under an object called message manager that is very easy go to app controller and you just need to take this dependency api called sap by core and then you need this get message manager method to call to get the message manager framework object reference and now you need to call this method called register object and passing this you know the input field with value as true then it will set that input field to the message manager and all the constraints whatever you have set will start automatically behaving it's quite easy so one one thing to notice is like this value state tax i have just added over here as a you know if anything wrong happens i i wanted to show this message but whatever I'm receiving is not that one, but it's something else it's receiving, right? It's showing something else. And this is coming all the way from the message manager framework. But now if I'm interested to show this one, what needs to be done? So that operations we have done over here. In the second field, as you can see, some, something, a custom message that I'm showing. So let's go to the second input field. And here, I don't have any binding so just wanted to show you that sometimes we can or we may need to do binding dynamically so that's binding just to demonstrate I have done these things over here I have taken this order quantity 2 by ID because this is what you can see over here and then I had just used the method called bind value and the same thing I have set which is an object of type integer but in this case, you might have noticed that I have added one more event handler called onChange, which is attached to this change property. So here, what I've done under this controller, if you see this onChange, here just I'm getting that input object and passing it to our custom private method called validate input, which we have defined over here, and I'm just checking the validate value function of the type that I have used the type is obviously the integer type because you can see over here this is the type we have used so that specific integer type does have a validate value parts value and format value those kind of different functions so I'm calling this validate value functions and passing the value that user will enter over here and if it if it fails to validate then it will raise an exception so this is the exception I'm using it and sending a boolean error that something wrong happened now if i define a value state just like i have done over here so if i just put a value state for the second input field then that value will be considered now also i didn't want to you know define this value state text statically but that i also wanted to show you dynamically how we can do that it is also pretty easy and under the app controller, I have just used the same approach, but in this case, I'm telling a bind property. So this bind property method will bind the property of my model, which is the text is the property of my model to the property of my input field. So here is the property which I want to bind to with a model property or text. So if I quickly check our model, this text contains this custom field or custom value rather 
and the moment i am sending this validation error as true then this particular message and state will be active because i am just setting up my input object set value state within error because this is what i have set also i am triggering this validation rule then this particular value state which we have just defined over here under value state text will be displayed this is how it is behaving okay that's great so let's move to the next one called wait just wanted to show how the fraction and decimal works it's the same approach called wait little more you know format options and constants i have added over here and the type of i have used called sat ui model o data type decimal you can also use type float just now we have seen over here so this is something i have used and added little bit of you know, constraints like the precision is 13 scale 13 minimum and maximum but here the decimal or you know digits i have set it as 2 3 so if i put any values let's say 2 automatically this value sets to 3 digits if i put 1 it's okay if i put 12 it complains it says it should be less than 10 because here i'm just setting up the maximum as 10 if i put 10 it's all set but if i put 10 1 then again complains it says the three decimal places because here i've set it as a minimum and maximum as three you know digits for my decimals but i'm giving it four but i have not put any on change handler so that means i need to register this id with my message framework and that's what i have done over here my weight i have linked to my register object this is my date field which is a property of you know date picker and ui element i have used and it's showing a pattern like year month and date so if you want to change this pattern it's very easy that's the reason i just wanted to quickly check this out i have just used the format options and the type i've used is date so if you want to see what are the different options possible you just you know, search in the sdk and you will get all the details so here i can just toggle it like this let's put month first date and finally year a very simple change i'm making it up not much fancy just to show that how this change easily set the property all over here different last one is a little interesting here i'm using a zip code uh, input field and i am telling my type is sap y sample only digit so this is basically a custom type that i have created so it is not available in sap sdk of course you cannot find it because it's our own or my own fresh so let's let us see how this custom data type we can create so for that in index.chase i have done extending this simple type because all the types is basically coming from the simple type object so if you see over here this is the integer it's also extended from simple type so if you go over here you will find certain methods one of the method is called format value one of the method called parts value one of the method called validate value so these are the values or methods we need to overwrite so the same thing i have done over here and i have put this new data type with this fashion like a cpui sample only digit you can call it anything and i didn't do any implementation much for format and parts value just whatever receiving i'm just returning but here in the validate value i'm just putting a little regex and applying on the value that I'm receiving to see if the digits we are entering and the length of this digit is max 5. If it is not, then I'm throwing an error, which is called validate exception error with a custom message that I'm interested in, like this. Now, this is our custom type that we have created. And we use this custom type. Here we can use this while I'm binding the value of my model. Now, the thing is like, in this case, I need to also register to my message framework. So that's what I have done over here. As simple as that. So if I now put any values, one, two, three, four, five, six, then it complains, it says that it should be five digits. If I remove six, 
then it's all great. If I put in a decimal or something like this, it also complains. It says it's only digits and it should be five in length. So that pretty much I just wanted to show that how custom data we can create and you can play around with the binding uh, while I'm you know binding my model property with my UI element. We can put a lot of other capabilities also along with. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching and we'll again connect soon with a new topic in UIFF journey. Stay tuned till then.